Good morning and welcome to Morning Joe. It is Monday, October 31st. Paul Pelosi, the husband of the Speaker of the House, the woman who was second in line to the presidency, was savagely attacked on Friday. And while surgeons were operating on the fractured skull of the 82-year-old grandfather, deranged right-wing fanatics, Trump media allies, and some of the most powerful people in the world were feverishly trying to stir up conspiracy theories that distracted from the central political headline of this story. That years of Republican propaganda and Trump-fueled fascism led 42-year-old David DePap to break into Nancy Pelosi's San Francisco home, seemingly with the intent to harm her. Today, he'll likely be charged with the attempted murder of the speaker's husband, who was in the home when DePap allegedly invaded it. San Francisco police say he smashed his way in, a man on a mission, and confronted Paul Pelosi, but looking for Nancy. According to the AP, citing a person familiar with the situation, Pelosi told the intruder that he had to use the restroom. He was engaging with him, trying to hold him off. And in the restroom, that's where Paul Pelosi's phone was charging. And that's when he dialed up 911. When police arrived, DePap attacked Pelosi violently, smashing a hammer into his head and arms, fracturing his skull. Pelosi went into surgery. He is expected to make a full recovery. Police say zip ties were found at the scene, just like the ones found on those who were hunting Nancy Pelosi at the Capitol on January 6th. And that's not the only similarity. Before attacking Mr. Pelosi with a hammer, a source tells NBC News to pap shouted at him, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Where have we heard that before? Some on the right would say, don't jump to conclusions and don't connect that to this. connection? What connection? I don't see a connection. Why would there be a connection? I mean, he was just deranged, right? In an isolated way. And by the way, voters, look over here. Crime is up. Look away from the parallels to January 6th, Trumpists shout. A review of David DePap's online accounts shows he was part of a far-right world of hate, anti-Semitism, and conspiracy theories involving anti-vax hysteria, and voter fraud, and many of his posts published in the past few months, but don't, don't look at that. Ignore the fact that these right-wing screeds line up with the biggest lies propagated by Trump and Trumpists. He was deranged, after all. I mean, just isolated. Never mind the fact that cult leaders and fascists prey first on the weakest, most vulnerable among us. In short, deranged people that they inspire with hate and hard wire for violence against their enemies. But ignore all of that, say Republicans. After all, this political attack was just another example of rampant, random crime. When you let dangerous criminals out, out on the streets, you know, with bail and not put them in prison, you're, you're just asking for this, this sort of incident to happen. And I think it created the environment where this happens. So it's a convergence here of what has been political violence. Uh, we've witnessed mm -hmm. the rise of just crime on our streets and our subways. We all need to recognize uh, violence is up across the board. I think the other thing to remember is if this weren't Paul Pelosi, this criminal would probably be out on the street tomorrow. Other Republicans found this tragedy of an 82-year-old grandfather getting his brain bashed in with a hammer a political punchline, like Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, who saw the attempted murder of Paul Pelosi as a good opening line. Take a listen. 
Speaker Pelosi's husband, uh, they had a break-in last night in their house, and he was assaulted. There's no room for violence anywhere, but we're going to send her back to be with him in California. What? There's no room for violence. When asked about his one-liner, Youngkin's spokesperson said, quote, as the governor clearly said, the assault on Paul Pelosi was wrong and there's no place for violence. He wishes him a full recovery and is keeping the Pelosi family in his prayers. Youngkin's team called the concern that the governor was joking about violence a, quote, mischaracterization. When not making jokes about the attack, other Trumpists were spreading lies about it to make you look away. Take one unfounded anti-LGBTQ conspiracy theory claimed to be tied to the attack. About this theory, Elon Musk, the new owner of Twitter, and the man who wants to see Donald Trump reinstated on the platform said yesterday, quote, there's a tiny possibility there might be more to this story than meets the eye. That tweet had more than 24,000 retweets and 86,000 likes before he, the new head of Twitter, Chief Twit, deleted it. There is no mischaracterizing what happened. Are we to insist this attack was not the direct result of the dangerous, violent rhetoric we have heard from Donald Trump's Republican Party over the last six years? The deranged man who violently assaulted Paul Pelosi got his idea from somewhere. Are we supposed to ignore the fact that threats against the House Speaker have been specific for quite some time? Marjorie Taylor Greene reportedly liked a Facebook comment that stated removing Pelosi from office with a, quote, bullet to the head would be quicker. Greene also claimed under oath that she does not remember that she expressed support for Pelosi's execution back in 2019. That's convenient. Her boss, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, claims he was just joking when he said last year that if Republicans win the House majority and he gets the Speaker's gavel, quote, it will be hard not to hit Pelosi with it. It's pretty funny. It's a good joke. January 6th should have been all the evidence anyone would need Rioters were there to hang Trump's vice president and do Lord knows what to Nancy Pelosi, all encouraged by Donald Trump. It started before he became president. This guy started screaming by himself. And they did, I don't know, rough up, he should have been, maybe he should have been roughed up because it was absolutely disgusting what he was doing. So if you see somebody getting ready to throw a tomato, knock the crap out of him, would you? Seriously. Okay? Just knock the hell. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees. I promise. I promise. We're not allowed to punch back anymore. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. We having a good time? USA, USA. USA, USA, USA. All right, yeah, get him out. Try not to hurt him. If you do, I'll defend you in court. Don't worry about it. In the good old days, this doesn't happen because they used to treat them very, very rough. And when they protested once, you know, they would not do it again so easily. Isn't it great to be at a Trump rally, really? Right? Part of the problem and part of the reason it takes so long is nobody wants to hurt each other anymore, right? You know, it continued into his presidency. Remember Charlottesville? There are good people on both sides. Remember the subtle messages, stand back and stand by? When left unchecked, Trump led an increasingly desensitized nation through shocking moment after shocking moment, all the way through this, the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Yeah, there are many weak, deranged minds in this country like the man who attacked Paul Pelosi. But Republicans have been hiding behind that word deranged, as if it was some isolated incident, and you should only look at that, don't look at anything else, even if it's 
screaming out at you. And yet you can see where DePap's ideas came from in his blog posts, in his words, where is Nancy, in his plans, he brought zip ties with him. Deranged people can fall prey to a cult leader like Donald Trump, and they have. Thank you.